Welcome. Welcome to Seattle University School of Law webinar series offered today, February 11th, 2020. Think like a lawyer without being one. I am Linda Hemer. I am the Senior Director of Graduate Law Programs for Seattle University School of Law. I welcome you here today, whether you are attending live or listening to the archive. Thank you for your time. I know your time is valuable and you are engaging at some level of deciding uh, if this program uh, is right for you and I hope to answer those questions for you today or privately at another time. As you can see on this slide, uh, you can email me at lawgraduateonline at seattleu.edu, or you can call me directly at 206-398-4268. If I am not available to personally take, take your call, please leave a voice message with your name and your contact information, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. So what are we going to do today? We have a lot to accomplish in a short amount of time, and I do want to give you time to hopefully uh, have a little lunch break or wherever you are in your time zone and ask some questions. But success today would look like why Seattle University's Master of Legal Studies? What does compliance and risk management mean? Uh, we'll really focus on what it means to think like a lawyer, and then describe briefly how our program is designed and delivered. Then I will uh, share with you some of the highlights of next steps, and we will have a short question and answer period. So let's begin. First, what does it mean to be in compliance and risk management? I can tell you that this program, we launched our first cohort in the fall of 2019. So while Seattle University has been a university since the 1890s and the law school is coming up on 50 years, we also have had uh, for about five years now on-campus Masters of Legal Studies. But as a team, we realized that there was a student demand and an industry need uh, to develop uh, compliance and risk professionals or to help people already working in that space uh, build their skills and knowledge uh, for law and policy and possibly advance uh, in a master's degree to grow in their career or to make a lateral move. But really, if you drill down to it, compliance and risk is all about in any role or any industry, being able to focus on the things that need to go right and to be ready and agile to take action if things go wrong. And it's really about being able to think like a lawyer without necessarily having to be one. So, think like a lawyer. Now, I'll tell you, I attended law school over 30 years ago, uh, and I heard that. And then when I became a member of an academic member of a law school and a professor, we would tell students that. And frankly, it wasn't until a few years ago uh, that I actually had to define it, and I had to define it for myself. And what is it that I defined? That really thinking like a lawyer was solving problems through the lens of the law. And, you know, I don't want to jump ahead. I want to take a moment because this is really important. I shared it with a prospect once too. She said, well, what does that mean? And I gave an analogy that I think resonated with her because she joined our program. But I said uh, that I, I shared with her that I'm not a parent. Um, I'm a driver though, and if I'm driving down the street in a suburban area and I see a soccer ball bounce across the road in front of me, I'm probably going to apply the brakes or swerve to avoid the soccer ball because I don't want that ball stuck in the undercarriage of my car. It'd be annoying. So that would be my solution. And she had shared with me that she was a parent, one of the reasons she was looking for an online program. And I said, what would you do driving down the street and you see a soccer ball bounce in front of you? She didn't hesitate. She said, I would think that a child is probably going to chase that ball into the street. 
Now, I don't want you to see that I'm careless in some way, but the analogy was that she was now a parent and she framed the world through the lens of parenthood. And she saw the issue a little bit differently. I saw a soccer ball getting caught under my car. She saw a potential of a child running out in front of her car. So she chose to slam on the brakes, not necessarily swerve. So framing the world through the lens of parenthood. Similarly, once you've had the foundational education and experience of legal analysis, legal problem solving, and you learn to interpret the law and you have the knowledge of the law, you never see the world the same way. You are now thinking like a lawyer. Why is that important? Well, in compliance and risk, again, regardless of industry or whether you're with a government agency, on a publicly traded company, or your own private consulting firm, you can only properly assess what you need to do to comply with laws and regulations, and then how to properly determine the risk framework and your culture of risk, only if you understand how the regulators, how lawyers, how enforcers, how judges might think, and how to communicate with them, and then how to distill all that information to the leadership or to your team or to other employees, vendors, customers in ways that they understand and ways that translate through your knowledge of the industry. So, as you think like a lawyer, you will see and solve problems through a legal lens, but you have a dual uh, opportunity. You are approaching these legal or law problems through the lens of someone who already has experience in the industry. Um, that's something that lawyers often lack and one of the major concerns. Many of you who are joining today might be nodding knowingly in your business or in your personal life where you may have had to interact with a lawyer and the lawyer may have this, the expertise of procedure and law, but doesn't understand your particular business or issue enough to really effectively help you. The most common concern I hear from corporate leaders is, I wish I had a general counsel or a lawyer who understood my business. So in this role, you have an opportunity to take your industry or subject matter expertise from a job and then also be able to understand the law and policy, which makes you a key player in any industry where you can liaise with general counsel, you know when to reach out to outside counsel, and you could talk the talk and really uh, have a powerful influence uh, in, your, in your business. So why us? Well, you can learn from leaders uh, in this space, uh, our faculty are both lawyers, practitioners, as well as uh, compliance professionals with advanced degrees, a PhD or a Juris Doctorate, a JD. And then you benefit from our tradition. What's interesting about Seattle is Seattle University uh, has, again, over 100 years of tradition in Seattle, but also over 500 years of a Jesuit education model. Uh, that builds upon that tradition and then the global, innovative, entrepreneur, entrepreneurial spirit of Seattle and the myriad businesses, name dropping, Amazon, Starbucks, Microsoft, Google, all of those global companies that add to the experience and many of our faculty uh, and subject matter experts in this program are both alum alumni of our law school and also work in, at these companies, Amazon uh, or Boeing and have experience in that industry. Uh, so you can benefit from that tradition uh, and that exposure. Uh, we also build the program and listen to you to help you achieve your personal and professional goals. And then 
with the topic today, help you to think critically and to act ethically. I want to take a moment to say that the topic of think like a lawyer without being one uh, has its benefits, but also when we're thinking ethically, you are not a lawyer. And I want to make clear that part of our program helps you as law professionals who are not actively practicing law to appreciate the scope of your practice when you might cross the line into practicing law without a license. And normally it's not the student or the practitioner that is challenged with that. It's other people who come to them and ask them to do something that might cross that line. So we give you scenarios and we help you throughout your curriculum to understand uh, the unique roles uh, and when it is that might be practicing law, and when it is that you're just leveraging the law uh, as a thought leader and a professional, and to do so ethically and with cultural competency. So, again, we designed this program, and, and actually, I don't want to use the, the, the past tense. We are designing this program in response to industry demand and student needs. It is an, a dynamic, uh, program that we make sure we build out in ways that it's timely. Everyone can appreciate that regulations and the legal landscape and the risk landscape can change with a morning tweet. Uh, whether you're looking at the environmental regulations or global policy, we have to be responsive to that. So while we have a program in place and a curriculum in place, we are responsive to both employers' views, to industry trends, and to the dynamic nature of uh, law and policy as it relates to risk and compliance. So we have designed and envisioned this program and are designing this program in an edit iterative process to meet industry demand and your needs. What does it look like? Well, in a nutshell, we design this in kind of a scaffolded phase approach. The first term, this is a sick designed as a part-time fully online program to be completed in two years over six terms which are three terms or trimesters per year. And we want you to have a 14 week term where there's two courses of five credits, a three credit and a two credit course that are built out for you to take them simultaneously, but they're built in a complementary manner to make sure that you can see the interrelated nature of these courses. So there are four phases. There's the foundation. Then you take your foundational knowledge and you operationalize that. And then you can choose a concentration or elective phase. And then there's action where you show us that you have achieved these program levels and you have uh, built out a project or a paper in a capstone and you take a final elective. And I'm going to go backwards now. The concentration or electives, students are not required to declare a concentration. We just have identified areas of electives where we think are most in demand and meet the needs of our students. You are not required to take, you can, for example, uh, choose an elective in cybersecurity, an elective in healthcare, an elective in corporate. If instead you come to me and say, I am interested in financial compliance, we then have a concentration of, of elective courses for you to achieve that. But this program is designed regardless of industry you may choose to give you all the foundations and the skills and the values to take it to myriad industries as a graduate level student with an understanding of law and policy as it relates to the broader paradigm and framework in which risk professionals and compliance officials work. 
So the first two courses you, you will take are legal analysis, research and writing, and introduction to the American legal system. Then in your second and third terms, these are all required courses, you would have the opportunity to build upon your uh, first foundational courses and then work in risk management, understand the foundations of regulatory compliance, understand uh, contract uh, reviewing, interpreting, negotiating, as well as policy and procedure drafting, and then conducting an organizational uh, investigation. All of these courses are designed with some knowledge, content that you must learn, skills that you can build, and an opportunity to really take knowledge and skills and see them as relevant and timely in your day-to-day -day work, not just something that you will apply two years down the road. So, I know an important question for everyone is how much does it cost? Our current academic year in tuition, we have 30 credits that are offered at $1,200 per credit. Again, that's over a two-year term. Uh, for six terms, two courses per term. Students are billed on a per term basis. So that averages out to a base tuition of $6,000 per term. We do have a financial services team ready to counsel you and to help you find uh, any types of loans, financial aid or scholarships that may be available. We do not have full tuition scholarships available at this time, and I apologize for that. However, we do have a pool of funds available for partial merit scholarships. It is not a separate application. Everyone who applies to this program uh, are reviewed by the admissions committee for an opportunity to receive merit-based scholarship funds based upon your application and supplemental materials submitted in support of your application. So that's why it's important if you are interested in this program to apply as early as possible to have the best opportunity to be considered for those merit-based uh, scholarships. Our program structure is flexible. Now, I wanna be careful. Sometimes when people hear flexible, they hear, Oh, self-paced. There is a difference. Flexibility means when you can choose to do your work. Uh, it's online. You don't have to come to campus. We don't have a set time of day that you will have to be in the classroom conducting your work. The flexibility is in your time management. But that being said, this is a cohort uh, and we have demands each week where you may have to attend a discussion, you may want to participate uh, in some group projects, and there is a requirement that you submit assignments and learning activities in a date certain. So flexibility is more about where you study and when you study, uh, but the pacing is, uh, is a set schedule. I'd be happy to speak to you about that. Um, uh, personally, uh, if you have any follow-up questions. So, what are the next steps in applying? Our deadline is May 15, but again, for people who uh, are interested in merit scholarships or like to plan ahead to make sure they have all everything in place to succeed for the fall term, uh, I encourage you to apply early. As far as the fall term, our next start is September 8th. It's a Tuesday just after Labor Day. I apologize. I got a little carried away with my mouse and jumped back to a previous slide. Next steps. You can contact us at any time uh, to discuss your, your professional goals, any academic and financial aid options, we will respond promptly to your inquiries as well as your application. Uh, the, the admissions committee meets on a rolling basis 
uh, depending on volume, that's either weekly or twice a month. And we respond, uh, on average, you will hear about the admissions decision within two weeks of submitting your application. Now, applications are submitted uh, electronically. You could uh, submit uh, through the Apply Now button on our website, or you can contact me via email and I can send you a personal link. Uh, and then once you've applied, uh, transcripts have to be submitted, official transcripts, but we, uh, the admissions committee, can make a decision uh, without having your official transcripts in place. So it's just before you enroll, we must have official transcripts to confirm that you have met the minimum eligibility requirements of attaining a bachelor's degree. And then hopefully you enroll and begin your journey with us. So again, uh, key dates to remember, application deadline, May 15, may seem far away, uh, but uh, we know how quickly time passes. Classes start September 8. So here is our uh, contact information. Again, uh, you can reach me directly at 206-398-4268, or you can contact us via email at lawgraduateonline at seattleu.edu. Now, I know I've been a talking head and I've been leveraging a, a PowerPoint slide. I hope we do have some questions. Again, if you are uh, not comfortable or now is not a good time to formulate those questions, please feel free to email or call me. and We can schedule the time uh, to speak uh, about you and your goals and whether this is the best program for you. Now I do see uh, there is a question from uh, Jake uh, who asks that uh, yes, terminal goals of any program is to prepare or poise graduates for employment. After completing an MLS, what should students expect from Seattle U as far as networking with prospective employers? And is there a market demand locally and partnerships with employers? Uh, that is an excellent uh, question. And frankly, Jake, many of our students are already employed coming to this program and it is designed for working professionals. We have not designed the program specifically for people who might have just completed an undergraduate degree. Uh, frankly, uh, the admissions committee would want to work closely with the undergraduate to make sure that um, there is uh, clear expectations about uh, entry level positions and then to work with you. Uh, currently, we do have uh, a Center for Professional Development on campus uh, at the law school. Uh, and we have some online resources. Again, uh, many of those are designed uh, for people who are looking uh, to advance within their career, such as uh, how to negotiate with your employer about a salary or a new position based on uh, graduate studies. Uh, but we are continuing to build out our relationships with other employers and businesses, both law firms and businesses in the area. Uh, also, our alumni base is strong in Seattle, uh, and we even sponsored a compliance continuing legal education uh, program for our law students. Uh, so there are always opportunities to work with students based on their interests, their background, and their needs to make sure we can match you with employers. We currently do not have any type of internship or externship program set up uh, with an online, with this online program. Again, because predominantly most of our students are full-time working professionals. But as we grow our programs, we will continue to look at that potential need or demand. Uh, a follow-up question uh, from Jake is that uh, if you have uh, some law school or Juris Doctor uh, experience, 
uh, will transfer credits be considered? Absolutely. We will look at all uh, advanced degrees from prospective students about an opportunity to transfer. Uh, we have already had students uh, join this Master of Legal Studies program who had already attained and earned a Juris Doctorate or a law degree. What they realized was that law school did not prepare them specifically for the corporate work or compliance and risk management work. Law school prepares you maybe to see the risk of litigation or liability, but not necessarily strategic business risks, such as risk to reputation or risk against competitors in a particular industry. Uh, and transfer credits have been awarded uh, both to people who have uh, studied in law school and people who have other advanced degrees, such as a, uh, an EDD, a Doctor of Education, and a doctor uh, of psychology. So there's an example of where transfer credits have been awarded, and that would be on a case-by-case -case basis. I'm checking to see if there's any other. Ah, another one of the attendees has asked, what is the admission requirement? The uh, Admission requirement, we do not require any type of standardized test such as the GRE, the GMAT, or the LSAT. Instead, we expect that you have a minimum of an earned bachelor's degree from uh, an accredited institution. Uh, and then the program is designed part-time uh, to uh, accommodate and be flexible for working professionals. A great question. Uh, In-person interaction with students and professors? Well, uh, I know that I'll be meeting one of our current online students uh, on campus next week. Uh, she will be attending one of our continuing legal education. It's an all-day uh, educational seminar that's open to all Seattle University students, to lawyers, to practitioners, uh, and to faculty and staff. And while she's attending the campus program, uh, we're going to find time to meet and she will set up some time to meet with some of our uh, on-campus faculty who also teach in the online program. Also, anyone who enrolls in this program has full access as Seattle University student. That is campus events. You can get a campus ID. Uh, certainly that's beneficial if you live uh, within a reasonable driving distance. Uh, we do have uh, students from across the country and we tell them they could at least take advantage of the programs uh, if they are visiting the area. I hope that answered your question, Martine. Again, there's only so much I can accomplish in a small amount of time not being able to really drill down to some of your interests and needs, and I'd love to get to know you personally. One, even if this isn't the program for you, being able to talk to you, talk about the work you're doing, why you even came to us in the first place, helps us to better serve you uh, or other prospective uh, students. We also have an opportunity, so many of our students, I've spoken to their employers and their HR departments about tuition reimbursement and had the opportunity to uh, engage with uh, their employers to understand what demands might be placed uh, on their uh, on people in the program in their work but also the value that this program would add to their employee whether it's tuition reimbursement opportunities or just to know uh, what drew the student to them I've also reached out to businesses and industry leaders to make sure that our the competencies that we are giving to these students are transferable in the workplace. So it's an ongoing dialogue uh, and it would be a low pressure. You call me, 
I'm not a salesman, I'm a senior director. I wanna make sure that the students we select uh, are the right fit for us and that this is the right fit for you. I've also spoken to students and suggested other programs that might be a better fit, both in our university and, and uh, uh, throughout. There's other programs to select, there's other degrees. It, it's about making sure uh, that your needs are met. I'll take another moment uh, to watch for any typed in questions and answers. I don't see anyone typing. I do want to say thank you again for your time. Thank you for your interest in this program. Uh, I hope I've answered some of your initial questions and I hope you feel comfortable enough to contact me and my team uh, with any follow-up questions or comments. Whether you're thinking now or in the future about advancing your careers, uh, I hope that you will take a closer look and give us an opportunity to serve you in our program. Thank you for your time. I wish you the best of luck and I hope to hear from you. I will be stopping the recording now and again happy to share the archive linked with anyone uh, who might be interested who may want to review the PowerPoint and this recording again. Thank you and be well.